very jealous. So the source of importance of prayer to Jesus, who is an example, a Lord and Master, but we need to be like him to pray constantly. We need to rely and say, oh God is using me, and because of the big crusade, and I'm going to rest, and just relax a little bit. That's what you and I will do. No. But Jesus shows us that no, that is the most dangerous time after a big crusade. It's not the time for you to be resting, eating, relaxing, and dancing. No, it's a time to go back to the inner room and refill your back. Why? Because if you don't, Satan will find a little door to come in and spoil the testimony. And you begin to wonder how come it's happened, you just had a big demonstration of God's power, and yet there's a big defeat. Remember the case of Joshua when they went to conquer Jericho. They had a big victory over Jericho. The big victory the Jericho over her body. And what happened? The next day they went to Ai and were defeated. And were 30 men were killed. And the crowd was in shock. They didn't believe it. They said, What's wrong? How can you allow this to happen? Everybody will hear of this and they come and kill us now. You know? He gave us a big victory in Jericho and now I have defeated us. And God told him, There is sin to your camp. You see? That little sin of one man amongst one and a half million brought defeat to a whole country. One little sin. There is no little sin before God. So if you open the door, Satan will come in and destroy the lot. So the best way to guard that door, to keep yourself in, in sync with God, is to build a wall of prayer around yourself. And pray constantly. You don't go and relax. You can only relax when you get to heaven, but sometimes in this body, you have a war to fight. You are constantly in a war front with Satan. And it's demons. So you don't have to relax and say, oh, God used me mightily, 5,000 were there, God's power was there, let me just sleep, or let me do something like that. No. He went up into the mountain and passed that message by himself. So that this is why people go to the mountains. It's because it's a bit of separation from the world and separation with God. Because there's nobody else there, no sound of music, no videos playing, no social media, all these distractions. Then God can speak to you and you can hear God's voice there. In this present world, there's so much distraction that you need to go set a time to go apart to a secluded place and go hear from God. And that's what Jesus did, is to be alone without the crowd, without the apostles, that he could pray in the seat, get in the speech realm, and begin to hear from God the Father. So this was a good example of what when I was doing, was pray at all times. It's the time of prayer, God will give revelations of what's going to happen to you the next day, how you should do this. Oh, you know, all the things he has did were already shown to him during the times of prayer. So he knew what oh, all going to happen anyway because at the same time with God, that's quality time. Well, most of us, what do we do? We spend time on WhatsApp. We wake up on WhatsApp, we sleep on WhatsApp. So then we also use that time to pray or to read God's word you know, all the time on WhatsApp or Facebook. Listen to this music, listen to that summer, listen to this watch, you know. Anything but reading a Bible or praying. All of us are guilty of God forgive us. He draws himself. You must trust your flesh to obey your spirit because your flesh doesn't want you to pray, doesn't want you to do anything for your spiritual. All it wants is relaxation and enjoyment. So you must discipline your flesh. Say, no, I'm going to listen to. Word of God on the table, I want to read my Bible, I want to pray. You know, first listen to me. That's what you have to do. 
when Jesus knew the purpose of prayer, after he could say, he didn't have to set a boundary and guide himself. Because he knew I've been to that time. It's many people, they go for great crusades that big. They choose but shortly after, they defeated me. Because they have not surrounded themselves, they have not bound themselves to a prayer. But then they don't open. So we should not do that. So, so, so when the evening was come, he was all alone by himself. But see what happened to the sheep? The sheep carrying the apostles to the other side was in the midst of the sea, and the sea of Galilee. Toes tossed with waves, but the wind was contrary. The wind was contrary. The wind was contrary. This is a picture of a storm of life. And that storm is to test your faith. All the time Jesus was with them, they never had any issue. Now, Jesus was not the boat with them. See what happens. There came a big storm. It's okay when Jesus with you, yes, everything is fine. He supplied all their needs, provided for their needs, they didn't have to walk, everything was surprised to them. But now we see Jesus being removed. And there came a big storm. Remember the apostle uh, of John, the followers of John, they, they, they question Jesus. They said, why do your disciples not fast? And Jesus said, when the bridegroom is with the bride, they don't need to fast. But when he's taken away, they will fast. Because that is time to the to come. And of course they did that, they go back, after Jesus went up to heaven, they began to fast. Because Jesus was not physically present with them. What am I trying to tell you? There will come a time in your life when you will face the storms of life that will be contrary to you, contrary to everything you are doing, and you begin to wonder, Jesus, where are you? Maybe Jesus probably left you at that time to test your faith. Look, in the Bible, when the children of Israel were entering the, the, the land of promise, to Joshua, the Bible says that God deliberately let some tribes to wage war against his children because up to that time they had not faced any war, they didn't know how to fight. Now they were promised Moses had died. I said, You guys, you have to grow up. Enough of this honeymoon. I have to learn to fight. Every child of God is a fighter, a soldier in the army of, of, of God. You must learn to fight. And fighting it means Facing a real enemy, Satan, the enemy of your soul. And then you have to use the spiritual weapons, faith, fasting, prayer, the word of God to combat our company. So, the sheep they were traveling in the middle of the sea, toes with waves, that means the waves of carrying up, down, up, down, up, down. The wind was contrary. The wind was not great. A storm in your life. I don't know what to do. One trouble today, another one tomorrow. Trouble today, another one tomorrow. No peace of mind. But your faith is being tested. Jesus has deliberately allowed that wind, that storm, to test your faith. Whether your faith will overcome or not. He said, the Bible says, even your faith. He is able to overcome the world. You know, what you are going to need most in this world to overcome is our faith. It's not by crying, it's not by giving, no. The only way you're going to overcome the world trial and tribulations is through your faith. Faith is the currency. Now, how do you get faith? Is it by watching miracles on the video? No. We never developed faith like that. But if anybody was to develop faith, I think it should not be a who witnessed the living power of our own in this island. It's not a visible manifestation of God. They saw the Red Sea divided. They saw manna from heaven. They saw water come from the rock. But did that give them faith? No, because they didn't think it was cheap. And that was why Moses went to get the Ten Commandments. So faith does not come by seeing miracles. Faith is a spirit. 
2, put the minus 8, and say the E alone. Great faith 
was the person that is at this time. Because what he said he was going to do was purely based on the fact that it was Jesus calling him. And was a, his faith was fixed on Jesus. That was what made him to have the nerve and the courage to step out of the world in the middle of the night for that matter. Complete darkness. And begin to walk on the water to Jesus. Now, in your own position, can you do the possible? If Jesus asks you to do it in the middle of a crown? Or will you say, no, that can be Jesus? Jesus can't tell you to do that. He knows there's no way I can do that. Are you going to question the words you're hearing? The thoughts? Or are you going to say, if this is Jesus, and I know it's Jesus, I will do this. Do the possible. Do what everybody thinks is possible. It's totally based on your faith. So what is faith? Faith is evidence of things hoped for. The, the things you hope for are the things you haven't seen. Let's go to Hebrews 11, see the definition of faith. Faith is a spirit. Faith is also a gift of the spirit. So it's faith. Now, faith is the substance. The substance, that means the reality of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. So you have faith that can up in your mind, you already have, I like, can see, you can smell it, you can feel it. But in your hand, you don't have it. But when you have the faith of it, it's almost as if you already have it. You know? That's what they're saying. So if you have faith, you so much believe in what you're hoping for, that is almost a reality to you. The only thing that you cannot show people what it is, but you know, you already have it. That's why Jesus said, I want you and I pray, must believe that we have received and we will have it. That's exactly what he's saying. That when you pray to me and you believe in me, assume that you have your prayer answered. And your prayer will be answered. Because that faith will bring that prayer to completion. So Jesus said, the Peter said, if it is you, ask me to come unto you on the water. I mean, if it's not you, you will not ask me to come. You see? That was the implication. I know if you ask me to come, then it must be Jesus. And if it's Jesus, I will walk on this water to you. See? That miracle of Peter experience was simply because it was focused on Jesus as the voice that invited him to come out of the boats into the sunny sea and to walk to him. We have faith in Jesus. Do you have that faith that is able to rescue you today after the trial, tribulation you are going through? Do you believe that? Or are you running out of shelter, chasing your tail, looking for a solution everywhere? Not knowing that Jesus is See your faith to see what kind of substance you have in your, your spiritual life. Many of you say you have faith. Anybody can say that until they go through a big trial in their lives. That's when they don't know they don't have any faith. Look at the, the, uh, the children of Israel. One day they were praising God for drowning the enemy, tearing the Red Sea. The next minute they began to cross and grumble against God because they had no water to drink. So their faith evaporated in the heat of the affliction, the heat of the trap. Don't be a Jubilee soldier. Let your faith be fixed on Jesus, and Jesus is the racing world. So the, the amount of faith you have will depend on how much of God's word is in you. If you have very little of God's word in you, then you have little faith, and you'll be able to do more. That's why Jesus said that if you abide in me, and I was abide in you, you will ask what you will, and you will do it for you. Because your faith has already given you the substance of that thing you are hoping for. You see, prayer, successful prayer, is only faithful prayer. That's all it is. You know? You have said your faith has made you whole. You know that woman with the issue of blood that touched the hem of Jesus' giant? And the minute that blood was stopped, she didn't ask for her. She didn't ask the disciples to lay the hands on her. No. 
If you believe that this love of Jesus, if I can touch it, I will be healed. And Jesus said, Who touched me? Because power has gone from me. She actually possibly released that power from Jesus without his knowledge because of the faith she carried. That faith released to her her miracle. And it was done without the cost of Jesus. She took what she wanted from him without asking him. You too can have the same measure of faith. If tonight you can turn the head of Jesus, Jesus passing. Jesus is the oral God and the written word of God. When we are talking about the Bible, we are preaching Jesus. And if you can catch on and hook on to the message, you must receive the press and you give it today. So Peter said, God, and so what happened? When Jesus said, Come, that told Peter that it is Jesus. And that told him, Yes. And do the possible. And do the good. But Jesus has been to come. His faith was focused on Jesus. So, another Peter was come out of the ship, and the night carried out of him. In the middle of the night, he could only see practically the shadow of Jesus, and right about him were the monstrous winds and the waves going up and down, up and down. But despite that, Peter had the boldness and the courage and the faith to get out of the ship and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walked on the water. What carried him was nothing other than his faith. You know? We say, how much did that happen? How can a man walk on water? No man can do that. Because it defines the law of gravity. Any man on water will sink. Unless he had a flotation device, unless he took him afloat, something with gains. Peter didn't have that, even though he was a fisherman. He knew how to swim, but he took a swamp in this storm. One kind Peter with a supernatural force that supported him because of the faith in his heart. You too can do the possible if you believe in Jesus to rescue you, to deliver you. You can walk out of that very forest that the world has prepared for you. You can walk out of the dead lions sent to kill you if only you have faith in Jesus. So, the Bible says that but when he saw the wind boisterous, in other words, he saw how strong the winds were. Now, he knew those winds were strong before, he has just invited him. He has been in the boats. He has had the screaming of the waves. So it wasn't as if that was new to Peter. Peter was aware of how strong the wind was before he got out of the boats. So when he saw the wind was just he was afraid. Peter had faith before he got out of the boats. Now he's a place of fear. And he began to sink. You see? He now cried to God saying, God save me. Now let's look at that for a minute. He had a thing together on the boat saying, Jesus, if it's you, beat me and I'll come walking on the water to you. He said it himself. Nobody said it to me. And he said, Come. And he got out with that faith, with that boldness. He got out. He didn't mind, he didn't look at the wind. He didn't care to him out from the wind was. Or else from the songs were no. That was not Peter's problem. He didn't even see that. All he saw was Jesus in front. And he was walking towards him. He didn't care how deep the sea was. He didn't care how dark the night was. He didn't care about the storms. No. All he cared about was Jesus in front and coming to him. But after he began to walk, what did he do? He took his eyes off Jesus. And began to look at the storms. Is that what you're doing right now? Have you taken your eyes off Jesus? And began to begin to worry about the storms, the troubles, and the amounts of problems in your life? Is that what you're doing? If you're doing that, you begin to be afraid. Fear will set you. 
and you start falling. And this is what happens to many, many people. They give up. They feel overwhelmed by the problems and some of them die, they commit suicide. Because they take their eyes of Jesus. As long as you focus on Jesus, it doesn't matter how bad the sun is, how the mountain is, you will walk through it. Once you take your eyes off Jesus and begin to focus on the problem, you will fear will come. Why? Because your, your mind will begin to tell you, oh, you are never going to get out of this problem. Oh, this is an impossible situation. Oh, they are going to kill you. Oh, they are going to do this. You are not reasoning with your mind. Whereas before, you were your faith, which is the spirit of faith, was working in you. See the opposite? When you look on your problems, you are not working in the flesh. When you have the faith, you are working in the spirit. You are working in the spirit of Jesus Christ. And that spirit of faith in you is connected with the spirit and it will carry you above that problems. You walk on the mountain. You walk on that water. If only you can focus your eyes on Jesus. So once they looked at the songs, but why did they do it? Because it was the purpose of Jesus it was already walking. You don't know how many steps it took. This is the trick of Satan. Satan will make you focus on your problems rather than focus on your God. The God man that said that whenever he went through a problem, he didn't look at how big the problem was, but he looked at how big his God is. You might have a huge mountain before you. It doesn't matter. If you focus on Jesus, who is the mountain mover, you command that mountain should pass in the sea and they will obey you. That's what Jesus said, and the word is true. When you tell you have faith as a monster seed, which is the smartest seed possible, you will command the mountain of problem in your life to be passed into the sea, and he will be done for you. With that little faith you have. As I said, faith is a spirit. It's not something you acquire by watching movies or videos. It's something that comes inside your heart as a result of reading the word of God. Because Jesus said the spirit of Jesus is the spirit of faith. So when he said, I said, God save me, because he said he found himself sinking. I'm told him again, what happened to me? I mean, I'm the same person walking on this water. To Jesus, why am I sinking? Because for one second, he took his eyes off Jesus and put them on the problems, on the, the storms. Never you take your eyes off Jesus. No matter how bad the storm is, just say that six. I don't care. You refuse to be distracted. You refuse to take your eyes on Jesus. Keep it focused on me. As long as you focus on me, praying and believing in him. You will walk through that water. You will walk in that mountain. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? See? Why did you doubt? When Peter walked out of the ship, there was no doubt in his mind that he would walk on the water. He didn't care about his he didn't care about the wind, he didn't care about the waves. There was no doubt. But when he looked at the waves, he took his eyes of Jesus. Fear came in, and doubt came in. Doubt and fear. Fear comes before doubt. When fear comes in, doubt creeps. And that kills your faith. And once you start putting faith in the middle of that that's why it began to sink. So Jesus rebuked him and said, Oh, why did you do that? So well. I think you are that person right now. You are doing so well, but now you're getting afraid. And you begin to question God. Can he save you from this problem? You before I used to testify and boast about Jesus for your life. Now you're having some doubts. You're having some thoughts. And of course you start thinking, probably well, get worse and worse. So say when I come to the ship, the wind ceased. That's another miracle. 
Before going to the ship, there was a mighty wind, mighty storm, breaking to ground. But as soon as Jesus entered that ship, heavy wind stopped. What I'm going to tell you, you need Jesus in the boats. If you don't have enough faith to silence that storm, you need him to walk into it. Once he walks in, every storm in life must cease. Jesus is the master of the sea. Every sea, every wind must obey him. Your storm in your life today will become that silence that the entrance of Jesus into that the boats, into your family, into your job, into your career, into your finances. That storm threatening to drown you must cease at the entrance of Jesus because Jesus is the Lord of your life. That is what everything obeys. And then they were on the sheep came and washing, washing him, saying, For the truth, you are the Son of God. Of course, they see the power. They see the wind, the baby sees, they see Peter walk on the water. They see all this. They say, Yes. For the truth, you are the Son of God. Psalm 2 verse 7. Psalm 2 verse 7. Acts 8 verse 7. Psalm 2 verse 7. Acts 8 verse 7. Acts 8 verse 7 says that Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may, and as it has said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's when you baptize the little man, you know, on his way from the Ten Pentecost. That's the first of all in Jerusalem. So, Psalm 2 verse 7. That says, uh, Psalm 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God. So when the God of God came to the land of Gennesaret, the man of that place had knowledge about him. He said, The miracle worker is here. Go and bring the sick. Go and bring your name. Bring the deaf. Bring the blind. And they brought them all our disease and see what happened. And they begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garments. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Oh. Jesus did not pray. He did not have a sermon. He did not preach. He did not have a meat. All he did was sat, sit down and people lined up and one by one they came, touched the garment. You can see the demonstration of faith in this people. They didn't say, Jesus, lay your hands on me. Oh, Jesus, for me. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, you don't have to do anything. Your presence is not enough. Just let me touch your garment. Because I believe if I touch that garment, I will be made whole. And what made. Faith will make you whole. Jesus is passing by. Will you touch the hem of his heaven by faith today? And say, hey, Jesus, I'm sorry, I've doubted you. I've been to your part of my life. I'm ready and willing today to touch you as a pass, knowing that I'll be made perfectly whole from any sickness, any trial, any tribulation you're going through tonight. You can be made whole if you touch by faith is heaven. You don't have to physically touch that really you can be by faith that Jesus I connect with your hair, the garment. As they did in that Matthew 14, and all are made whole. So I'm touched by faith today. That as you did for them, you will do it for me. You will take on this yoke of bondage in my life. You will make pressure. You will take me out of this trial. Out of this fairy forest of affliction, out of this day of times. The entire day of you, you can do it if you will. You're welcome today, and you are yet to surrender your life to Jesus. I know you are a Christian, yes, 
you want to judge, yes, maybe not, but Jesus is passing by you tonight. Are you going to sign that to him? If you are willing and able, say this short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I have sinned against you. Have mercy and forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Make me holy and pure. Come inside my heart today and rule my name of my life. Take my name from the book of the dead. Now write my name in the book of life. And I will follow you all the days of my life. That simple prayer you just said, in earnest, in the bottom of your heart, makes you to become born a Christian on your way to the kingdom of heaven. Just trust him, believe in him, and he will come in and change you from inside out. You become a new creature. Your tests will change, your friends will change. You have a new aspect of life. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, put it like that. The God of the glory, we thank you for the privilege to hear your wonderful words of life from heaven today. We thank you for the word of faith you have given to us, that if we can only believe in you, we will see the revelation of your power as Peter did. When we believe in you and walk in the water. But uh, deliver us from the spirit of fear and doubts. Let us not focus on our problems and this time to our lives, but focus on you. The author of the self and faith. The mountain over the one that can walk on our problems. Give us the spirit of faith. Give us the hunger for your word, because we know as we consume your word. We will be able to hear, and that hear will give us a faith. In Jesus' name we will pray. Amen. 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 Remember to pray without ceasing, read your Bible, commune with God, settle yourself in the only place where you can care from heaven, make sure you attend church regularly. So we meet again, stay blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah.